I think it's hard to convey sometimes that I think we have moved a little bit, um, actually quite a lot, but change over a period of time, it's hard to quantify. So stuff like teammates ringing you up, that's probably because they wouldn't have done that unless all that's happened over the last two years. It's, a, it's that growing awareness. So we've had it, and change doesn't happen instantly. We were there, we were here one minute, and now we're here, fantastic. It, 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 it processes over time, and that time takes some time. So I think the fact that people are more aware of these situations now, I, we feel, and I think, I feel more confident now explaining things to people who, who don't necessarily uh, get it because they've experienced it, but more now ready to have uncomfortable conversations than we did two years ago. So we can't, we can't forget that. It doesn't mean to say that we can all backslap and say we're in a great place, isn't this fantastic? But I think we've got to recognise, if you look at any movement for change, and I think we are in a really transformative time, we look at any movement for time, you can't say it happened then and then it was the next day it was fine. It just happened slowly. And that growing awareness is there. The, the game's now having to, tie, having to look within itself absolutely massive. What Troy's saying in terms of the grassroots challenge, but I would imagine even now, at grassroots level, there's people thinking that what they did five years ago, was that right? Was that the right thing to do? Never mind at professional level. So I think I'm always, I'm always trying to be positive, trying to put the positive light on things, to acknowledge that we're having difficult conversations now. The problem is now if we sweep things under the carpet and we don't have them, I think that's always the problem. But even, you know, we had the, the, the film that some of you might have seen with Alan Shearer and Ian Wright, really uncomfortable conversation between them of that generation, that older, that younger people might not have seen, but the two legends playing for England. And he, Alan Shearer was saying that, you know, he's learnt this and this. Fair conversations that couldn't have happened three years ago or didn't happen three years ago. So we've just got to keep encouraging them for me. So especially in light of what actually happened in the dressing room, how can teammates or authorities or clubs support those players that go through those incidents a lot more? And is it something that, do we feel that it's adequate enough at the moment? Yeah, so I would say I think to the point that Ify made, there's a real piece around instilling confidence in people to support one another. Um, so it isn't five years down the line where people are reaching out and, and giving you a call and saying, you know, I should have done X, Y or Z. I think from an authority's perspective, one of the things that we are launching very imminently, I'm not sure um, if people are aware, but we're looking at different mechanisms by which we can put in more support for victims of discriminatory abuse who are going through investigations, going through um, the process that was alluded to um, in the documentary there. I think it's also about we being willing and open to have some of those difficult conversations like um, if he has said it's about having those difficult conversations with players, having those difficult conversations with coaches, with referees and making sure that they feel supported and have adequate training to be able to deal with those circumstances and those situations. Like Troy said, it's very different when you're in a kind of professional environment with, you know, VAR and multiple linesmen and a whole sort of system, I suppose, in the grassroots space. Often it might be just one individual on a Saturday morning trying to manage what can be a difficult circumstance. I think we have to make sure that we do a better job of getting the rules out there. Um, and I'm really honest in saying, those who, who know me, I don't have a background in football, but often I have sometimes jumped into these scenarios where I've gone, why is it that this team walked off and what's the context and why have they been charged, etc., etc.? And it's when I've taken a step back, taken the time and fully understood the rules in the grassroots space that I'm able to go, oh, okay, actually, these are two things or two elements that are divorced from each other. One is mitigating circumstances to the other, but we have to do a better job of communicating that to people. And I don't think at the moment we have done enough of getting that out there, even though it's in the public domain. We haven't looked at how we can help people to understand that, how we can help people to be knowledgeable about that. And we have to make sure that our referees and coaches are also able to speak with authority about that in those circumstances and situations so people know what the result is going to be of certain actions, um, what the investigatory process is going to look like, what support is available, what can happen afterwards. All of those things are things I think we as the authorities can do a better job of, of doing and um, continuing to work as a collective and working together. So a piece I worked on for The Athletic, uh, I did it with, with Daniel Taylor, and it was investigation into 10 years on from uh, the Ferdinand and Terry case about what had happened. Uh, and I spoke to the chairman of Padaham Town, and about three or four years ago, you might be familiar with the case, Padham Town played a game and uh, their players walked off the pitch because the goalkeeper, Tony Aguiare, was getting abused. And um, I spoke to the chairman just about what kind of happened in that process. I think the match took place in November 2018. And um, the local FA dealt with the situation. And I think in March, uh, they released their statement. And Congleton Town, so the fans who had abused 
the goalkeeper. Their club got fined £160, but a club who walked off the pitch because their goalkeeper had been abused got fined £165. And um, I spoke to Sean Astin, the chairman, and I said, what kind of support was Tony given during that period? None. And that's clearly, as you've just alluded to, something that needs to change. That was three years ago, so I'm sure the processes have been updated, but that kind of shines light on what some of the issues we all face are. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I can confidently say that the processes have been updated. One of the things that have been brought in um, within the past 18 months is an entirely new disciplinary team um, sitting inside the FA, but looking at the grassroots space with individuals responsible for different regions. Um, those are, again, I'm, my background is not the legal and governance space, but I know just as from what you've said there, it's two different rule breaches that have been kind of, um, that have taken place. One which relates to discrimination, rule E3, and one which is E20, which is abandonment of the game. I don't know the context and background of that specific case, um, but I know that we have cases like that that happen on an ongoing basis and part of the context that we need to do a better job of doing is saying to people when people are going through discriminatory abuse that is a mitigating circumstance against other potential rule charges but we have to recognize that there are other potential rule charges and therefore we have to go through a process of investigation um, from the support perspective i completely agree with you and as i say i'm pretty sure it's let me say this, it's launching this side of Christmas, um, but there is a, a broader piece that we're doing to look at the support that we can put in place for victims of discriminatory abuse. I know professional players will get it via the PFA, who do a great job of, of support from a wellbeing standpoint, but again, the grassroots, the non-league system doesn't yet have some of that one-to-one -one level counselling support that, that people might need after going through this, and, and that's one of the things that we're looking to implement for those going through investigations. Remember that situation well, Jay. Spoke to the club. Um, Sean, um, just after England versus Bulgaria, just after Yeovil. Three or four days later. Yeah, it was, it was really <laughs> yeah. Close to each other. just after Yeovil Town, Har Haringey Borough, where Haringey Borough, the manager who I know well, took the decision to take his team off the field of play because of the abuse. Same scenario, was ordered to play the replay, was ordered to play the game again because it was an FA Cup tie, uh, which I didn't agree with, to be totally honest. I, I, I don't understand why we're allowing. Uh, teams to and their fan bases because teams are responsible for their fans to abuse and get a second opportunity. I, I can never understand that. But I, I want to detach the again. I want to detach the, the the situation that presents itself in grassroots away from the professional game because the professional game has its rules, as Ed Lean has quite rightly said, with the E3 and E20 rule. I don't think they should be applied in grassroots because it's a totally different environment and situation that is being applied to these players. So it's really good to hear that there's there's new processes coming in place because I think they have to come in place. If we are going to protect people in that, and that's what we're doing, we're trying to protect people in that space to feel confident and comfortable to go onto the field of play, play the game and come off. Yeah, without any, and if they do experience anything like the drama as, as, as kind of depicted, then they're confident that the process will safeguard them. So I'm, I'm using that term safeguard because football is supposed to safeguard all its participants. And at the moment, football is not safeguarding its participants. So if we hear one story like that, that story, that is one too much, but there's far too many more. And I, and I don't wanna keep going on because I wanna give the audience an opportunity, but we're having this conversation, which Ify has said, which is really important, uh, really important to, to influence a, a, a growing audience that we would have here as well. And I think those elements together are massively important.